regression analysis, you will get the significant results. But the results are no meaningful. So then that's why we use the advanced technique called vector error regression or the vector error correction one. Uh, in this second top, uh, uh, under the time series, uh, the second uh, topic, under the time series analysis, the second topic, I explain you how to check the stationarity using the autocorrelation function. Uh, one method is use in the polylogram. Last week, also I explained how to use the polylogram. In the polylogram, uh, in the polylogram table, pay, uh, focus your attention under the column, autocorrelation AC column, that is autocorrelated column, autocorrelation column, and it shows, it should uh, gradually die out. If uh, the autocorrelation column, it gradually die out, it shows that the values further in the past, values in the past are less correlated with the present values. Past values uh, further in the past, not the part, is a past are less correlated with the current values. Assume that it uh, autocorrelation it doesn't, it do not die out rapidly. It indicates that the series are non stationed Right, so then let's let's check these two once again. Go to your data file. Go to your data file. I right, go to your data file. Right. First, see whether the series are non stationary. First thing you uh, should do is all the time series uh, data uh, by using a graph, see whether the series are all the series are non-stationary or stationary. How to do this? Go to the quick and then graph. Go to the quick and graph. Give the variables in our example. Those are the variables. Consumption, GDP, human private investment. Those are the variables uh, we consider for analysis. Now click OK. When click OK, so then there is an option page, graph type. There are different type of graphs. Uh, select the basic graph. Under the basic, graph type are there are several specific graphs. Uh, select line and symbol. And the line and symbol, so then you can see here graph data, write your raw data as it is. Right, so the raw data. And then orientations, it is normal data. Borders non, right? Multiple series, uh, multiple graph. For each series, you need to um, 
you need to draw a separate graph for each series. Then click OK. Now this is the graph. Now you can see uh, select Right now you can see those, is the, those are the graphs. In this is the consumption, you can see there is an upward trend. In the GDP also, you can see there is an upward trend. Uh, in the human capital, also you can see there is an upward trend. Physical capital expenditure, also that you can see there is an upward trend. Human capital expenditure, also you can see there is an upward trend. But this, if the time series data are trending and it has a drift, then this data cannot be used, uh, cannot be analyzed by using normal regression analysis. Right, let's, let's analy analyze the series. Right, let's analyze the series. For example, go to the quick and estimate equation by using normal regression. See what will happen. Assume that you want to check that consumption expenditure depends on the uh, countries uh, income. For example, here consumption expenditure depends on the GDP. Right. Now you can see this, here R squared, that's what I explained that is a spurious regression result. Right in our model. I explain you. Right. Anyway, this is the our result. This is our model. Okay. Right, this is the model. Right. Here I Spurious results 
means when obtaining apparently <clears throat> significant results from unrelated data when using non-stationary, high R squared, and then coefficient are significant. See, <clears throat> you can see that it's a high R squared. In the coefficient, the coefficient of the GDP, the probability value is 0.00, .00 is highly significant. Right, that's what we call spurious regression research. When we plot the data, we get the G consumption that you see, you can see all data series are go together. plot all the data in a one single graph see what happened you can see there is an upward trend between among the variables can see that there is an upward trend in all these variables. Right, so then um, this is the one uh, symptoms we can see when using, the, uh, when using regression analysis for time series data. Here you can't say that our consumption depends on 98%, right, depend on the country's GDP. The GDP is highly significant variable that refer to the consumption. You know that in practice, the consumption do not depend solely on the country's GDP. There are many other factors that affect, but this results shows misleading information. Uh, the checking the stationarity using the autocorrelation function. The stationary, whether the series are stationary or not, can be checked by using the autocorrelation function. So then by using the correlogram. In the correlogram, uh, let's see in this example, what's the correlogram? Right here for uh, Cross series statistics, correlogram. Go to the quick series statistics and then go to the correlogram. Series name, uh, consumption.
this level's data. Now see that autocorrelation. Then the autocorrelation here 0 0.899 gradually 7 1 it uh, right it uh, do not gradually die out but yes it uh, gradually it gradually die out that means there is a no autocorrelation problem uh, no uh, there is a this series is stationary also go to that uh, another series correlogram gdp you can see this it's also the gradually die out that means uh, the series is stationary Right, that is the autocorrelation column. Uh, when all the series, if you have, you know, that five series, check the correlogram for each series separately. But in the uh, time series, I explain you don't use the series this are in rupee values then convert all the series to the logs then generate consumption it is log that generate convert all the vari variables or the series to the logarithms it's equal in its that all lie in logarithms. Then the cons uh, this uh, con GDP generate L GDP equal Then it creates a series log GDP. That is log log values. Also generate 
physical capital L P H Y C. Y-C, physical capital expenditure. Generate uh, PVT equal log Now those are our variables. GDP, log physical capital, log private investment, uh, log consumption, log GDP, log physical capital, a log human capital asset, generate LHC, log HC. That first convert all the uh, all the time series values to the natural logarithms. Right now, your series uh, graph, all the series. L, L human capital, L physical capital, L private. Investment. Those variables in separate graph. Write all other logarithm values. All logarithm value. You can see uh, the trend. All series are trending. Also, graph each everything in one set of graph. Everything in one single graph. Now go to the Corellogram for each series. Quick uh, series statistics Corellogram. A series name is L GDP. Its levels. It shows that it gradually die out. Autocorrelation column. It should gradually die out. 0 0.044 that means minus 1 it is you know you, you can see that it's gradually die out autocorrelation column pay your attention for the autocorrelation column uh, do the same for each uh, series statistics for logram for each in human capital can see the autocorrelation. If autocorrelation column, it is also gradually a die out. Now, This is the check-in autocorrelation uh, stationarity using the autocorrelation function. One method is check the correlogram uh, table. If uh, the autocorrelation column, if it gradually die out, uh, 
uh, it shows that series are stationary. If the autocorrelation column that values do not die out rapidly, it indicates that the series are non-stationary. Another test, that is a formal test to check the stationary is a unit root test. The unit root test can be uh, checked by using the Kipuller test and the augmented Dicupular test. The null hypothesis is series are non-stationary and alternative hypothesis are series are stationary. Uh, the test is, as I explained uh, last week, again I remind it to you today, go to the quick, here series statistics and the unit root test. Uh, go to the variable L consumption. Augmented Dickey Fuller or Dickey Fuller or uh, go to the first uh, Dickey Fuller test levels and trend and intercept. But in the a unit root test of Quentin Dickey Fuller test shows that Quentin Dickey Fuller test shows that consumption it is not stationary at the levels because the probability value this value probability value is greater than 0 0.05. Augmented Dickey Fuller test statistics, the probability value corresponding to the augmented Dickey Fuller test statistics is less than 5%. Then we accept our null hypothesis. But here we can't reject our null hypothesis because the probability value is greater than 5% then we accept null hypothesis that means the series are non-stationary at level state. Same thing we can do view unit root test for the first difference. In the first difference series, in the first difference series, you can see in the first difference series, you can see the probability value, here the probability value, it is less than 5%. So then our hypothesis, I write here, our null hypothesis is unit root. You can see log consumption has a unit root. Unit series are non-stationary. hypothesis series are stationary. If the probability value if the probability value right, if the probability value this case 0 0.08 that is greater than 5 percent
1480. But in this case, the value is 0 0.008, then we accept our alternative hypothesis. It means series are stationary. Right. So the same thing we can do for each series. Now again go to the series. Quick. Quick. Uh, series statistics in a true test. Levels. It is non stationary. Right, it is non stationary at levels. Now go to the stress difference. View, unit truth, stress difference. It is okay. So then it is less than 5%. The series are stationary at first difference because probability value is less than the 5%. Now go to the next variable. Group the series statistics, unit truth test. Uh, okay. Human capital. Go to that first levels. In level data, it is probability value is 0 0.2585. It is greater than 5%. It means that our levels data are non-stationary. Now go to the wave unit to test stress difference. Stress difference series are okay. You can see that probability value is 0 0.004. It is greater than Sorry, it is less than 5%. That means the second difference data are uh, stationary. Now go to the next variable. Quick series statistics unit truth test. Uh, go to the log physical capital it is also non stationary at levels now go to the first difference Plus different series are stationary at uh, in the physical capital variable. The same thing you can do for all the series you consider. Series statistics you need to test and now go to the private investment. Same thing. It is also non uh, non uh, non stationary at levels. Let's see that the difference. 
plus different series are stationary. Now we can see that all our data, now we can see all the data, all the series, at press difference. It means that order of integration is I1. If the series are non-stationary or stationary or the series are in our series are uh, stationary or non-stationary at uh, plus difference, then at levels and the first difference, the series are stationary. If the series are stationary in the same order, now our next option is to check whether the series, the variables have a long run relationship. Then the co-integration. Then go to the quick. Group statistics and go to the Johansson integration test. Give the order all the variables health consumption, health GDP, health physical capital, health LPVG. All exogenous variables Right, this is the uh, co-integration test results. Right, so then we check the stationary. If uh, all the series are integrated in same order, the next step is to check whether there is a long run relationship among the variables. So assume that critical values of co-integration Assume that the value is 3.9. If the tau statistics is less than the critical value, then we reject the null that the least square residuals are non-stationary and conclude that they are stationary. It indicates that series has a long-run relationship. Right, in our data set, plot each of these series. The data set I have uploaded in the expenditure, uh, government expenditure data. Plot each of these series as I did. Obtain the correlogram for each series and comment. Uh, we did. Uh, as I explained, and then do the same. If you have your own data set, do the same. Estimate the simple regression, the GDP and the private investment. Comment the result. Estimate the consumption expenditure and the GDP and comment the results. 
explain how the regression in above two are related to the problem of spurious regression. Right. Now, go to the uh, estimate equation. Statistics, Johnson co-integration test for these two variables. If you consider their private investment and There is a no co-integration. Uh, group statistics for a logram. Johnson co-integration test. As in L private investment. Uh, L GDP. Depends on human capital, L physical capital, L consumption, There is a, there is a one point integration equation if we consider all variables. In my example, I ask you to do whether private investment of the country depends. Investment, L physical capital, and, and uh, L GDP. Three variables. There is a no point integration. There is a no point integration. We consider that all three variables, there is no co-integration. There is a no co-integration at the 5% level. Now see that if other way around, other example, if quick group statistics, Johnson co-integration test, a physical capital expenditure private investment and uh, depends on these two factors no point integration is no point integration no point integration. Also same thing.
you can do that group statistics Janssen for integration test uh, human capital expenditure depends on GDP and private investment See, uh, there is no co-integration between these two variables. Also, do this uh, Janssen co-integration test Air consumption expenditure, air GDP, and air private investment. Also shows that there is no point integration. But if you consider all the variables, you can see there is a co-integration. If we consider in our model, in private investment is a function of uh, infrastructure, uh, government infrastructure expenditure, fiscal policies, and the uh, government income. There is a no co-integration. The physical capital expenditure, if we consider it at a dependent variable, there is a no co integration. If we consider the each expense investment, government investment and private investment as dependent variable, there is a no co integration. Right now, our topic is now vector autoregression and impulse response function. I explained you last week. If the series are co-integrated, the series are co-integrated, uh, that means if co-integrated means there is a long run equilibrium then our test statistics is uh, vector error correction mark. If the series are no point integration, that means there is a no long run relationship, then we can use vector autoregression or the impulse response functions to analyze the jet. Right. So then, Today, uh, in our three models, in our expenditures, private investment, and the government investment, consider as a dependent variable with the country's income, we will get that series are not co-integrated. If the series are not co-integrated, we can use uh, we can use vector auto regression. So then what is vector auto regression? In this topic, we assess the selection of the optimal lag length in vector auto regression. V A R means vector auto regression. Evaluate the use of impulse response function with the vector autoregression. Assess the importance of variations of the standard VA. VA means vector autoregression. Crit critically appraise the use of VA with financial models. Assess the use of soft vector error correction models. Last topic we have discussed last week vector error correction model.
in the vector correction model are the last week we discussed it is the basic model basic one with an error correction term incorporated into the model the reason for the error correction term is the same as with the standard error correction model error correction term measures the any changes any movement away from the long run equilibrium these are often used as part of the multivariate test for point integration such as johansson maximum likelihood test however there are number of differing approaching approaches to modulate the vector correction how many lags we need to include uh should be on the error correction term however the error correction term it is difficult to interpret as it is not obvious which variable it affect following the shock right vector error correction term is the speed of adjustment to the equilibrium why there is a not equilibrium there is some shocks but it doesn't vector a correction term doesn't uh, reflect this this equilibrium based on which uh, shock right this is the vector a correction term here this uh tau 1 1 and then tau 2 1 2 2 2 are the error correction term however in our model if we consider all the variables together this is the method used for vector error correction here in there is a, the variables are co integrated the variables are co integrated we use vector error correction e r v e r this is a co integration is a number of co integration is one it's a basic we need to give all the endogenous variables our gdp capital and uh, in private investment and those are the variables we consider put all the variables as an exogenous variables this is our vector correction model our vector error correction model now copy and paste it in your model here in the model vector error correction there is a one co integration two co integration here vector correction
character correction model. Here is the point creation equation. Here the vector error correction model. Also, in the vector error correction model, quick no, proc make system order by variable. Go to the proc and make system and the order by variable. Our model is, first model is the our model. Copy and estimate equation and paste. This is our model. The vector a correction term, it is it should be negative and uh, probability value shows that our vector correction term is not significant. Then the If you can run the estimate to our vector correction model, our endogenous variable assume that L private investment GDP GDP L consumption L human capital L fiscal capital. The vector correction model. And go to the proc make system order by variable. This is private investment considered as the dependent variable. That is then your objective. Right? I consider uh, GDP as a dependent variable, I consider the private investment as the dependent variable. Copy. Go to the quick and estimate equation. Paste. It's also negative but not significant. It is also not significant. Now let's see that. Quick uh, estimate two, vector correction.
participation. Right, now let's analyze uh, one. Right, when the stimulant the bar or conducting the Granger causality test, the test can be sensitive to the leg length of the bar. Sometimes, we use how many legs we need to include. And it depends on quarterly data, include four legs, monthly data, or 12 legs. 12 legs. Uh, the more rigorous way to determine the optimum leg length is uh, to use the Akaike or Schwarz variation information criteria. However, the estimations tend to be sensitive to the presence of autocorrelation. In this case, following the use of information criteria, uh, can be used to uh, include how to um, include the legs. The information criteria, the main one is Schwarz Bayesian criteria and Akaike information criteria. In the VAR model, go to our model, quick estimate VAR, the unrestricted VAR. Here, uh, physical capital L, PH, expenditure, uh, LGDP, LPVG. Right, this is our model. Here, like the structure, this is the VAR specification, it's a vector autoregression estimate. Uh, <clears throat> in the VAR specification, So they go to the V. This is the VAR model. In the VAR model, vector autoregression estimate. In the VAR model, go to the V and the lack structure. Uh, go to the AR autoregressive root graph. In the uh, inverse, in the reports, inverse uh, roots of autoregressive characteristics polynomial graph the name of name is inverse roots of autoregressive characteristics polynomial the var model is stationary if all roots there are how many roots there are many roots one two three four five six all roots uh, 
have absolute value absolute value less than 1 and less than 1 and lie inside <coughs> lie inside <coughs> inside the unit clause inside the unit circle it should be number of variables multiplied by number of legs of fruits visible on the graph. Uh, in this model, only one, one root lying on the unit circle All are inside. It shows that our model is stable. Our model is stable. So then there is another one, range of causality. Uh, in, the, in this, we can see that if the endogenous variables <coughs> can be treated as endogen exogenous, the chi-square world statistics the chi-square world statistics for the joint significant of each uh, of the other leg endogenous variables probability is the uh, row value of that statistics. Accordingly, test all variables in our model. Uh, here, except this variable, all these two variables can be used as an exogenous variables in our model. Leg, uh, leg exclusive uh, other thing is lack exclusive test the lack exclusive test the lack exclusive test statistics for the joint significance of all endogenous variables at the lag is reported for each equation separately and jointly. Uh, the test suggests that jointly all uh, four lags, all lags 
of all endogenous variables are statistically significant. Copy and paste your model. It is also the next uh, command is lag length criteria. Lag length criteria. The lag length criteria shows that maximum lag should include is two lags. Most of the lag length criteria, uh, this one and this criteria, Akaike information criteria and SHAS criteria and HQ. Most of the criteria shows that maximum lag length should be 2. Right, then another test is go to the wheel and the residual test and go to the correlogram. So then tabulate by lag. Then you can see like tabulate by lag or tabulate by variables. This is the VAR residual cross correlogram. And then do the normality test and the normality test. Normality the Jack Berra test. Right, those are the uh, techniques when we are using uh, when we are using bar model. Like when the criticism, so then we use the causality test. In the range of causality test uh, is used in bar modeling. However, we do not explain uh, the some aspect of the VAR, but it doesn't give the sign of the effect. We don't know that that causality it is positive or negative. Also, it doesn't show that 
how long the effect lasts. Also, it doesn't provide of whether this effect is direct or indirect. In our causality model, Granger causality, right? This is the Granger causality test. It doesn't give the sign of the effect. Also, it doesn't provide whether it is whether positive or the negative effect. Also, it doesn't show that how long the effect lasts. Also, it doesn't provide evidence whether this effect is direct effect or indirect effect. That is the criticism of the causality test. Therefore, we use impulse response function. Impulse response function, it find out the effect of the dependent variable in the vector autoregression regression to shocks to the all variables in the var. If there are a system of two variables, there are four impulse response functions. If there are three, it is nine. Uh, impulse response and response functions like that. Uh, the shocks occur through the error term when some uh, impact or effect or shock or innovation uh, impact it affect to the error term and then it affect to the independent variable over time. In effect, the VAR is expressed as vector moving uh, average model. The shocks to the error term can then be traced with regard to their impact on the independent in the dependent variable. Right, this is you know that shocks. Right. In the bar, in our model, in the model, how to use the VAR model, first go to the quick and estimate VAR. Here in L capital, L GDP, L private event. Assume that there's, these are our variables and click OK. Then this is our VAR model. The VAR model, now there are some criticism as I explained. In the VAR model, there are some criticisms. So then that's why we use impulse response functions. Go to the view, impulse response. Go to the view and select impulse response. In the impulse response, uh, you can select multiple graph. Right? Select analytical. Then all the variables listed. Periods, 10 periods. Impulse definitions, select impulse definitions. In the impulse definitions, default is Cholesky DOF adjusted. Right select, uh, the, uh, select the default one. And then click OK. Right, those are the impulse. Right, those are the impulse response functions here. 
physical cap any shocks to the physical capital and what is the response of physical capital same variable any shocks to the gdp what is the response any shocks to the private investment what is the response any shocks to the gdp what is the response any shocks to the uh, physical capital expenditure what is the response like that but uh, when any shocks to the physical capital positively impact to the physical capital and then after the uh, fifth year it decreases so then you uh, pay your attention for the uh, blue line first impact uh, positively but a decreasing is decreasing and uh, then when any shocks to the gdp it affect to the physical capital at the beginning positively right then later stable level when any shocks to the private investment it affect to the physical capital firstly positively then negatively uh, if any shocks to the physical capital it doesn't affect to the uh, gdp when any shocks to the gdp and it affect to the gdp is stable any shocks to the private investment it affect to the gdp firstly uh gdp negatively and any shocks to the physical capital it affect to the private investment positively any shocks to the gdp it affect to the private investment positively any shocks to the private investment it affect to the private investment firstly positively and then negatively so that that is impulse response function shows that Then the various decomposition <coughs> view is various decompositions provide the similar information as for the impulse response. Similar information. various decomposition stable if the graph same thing if you show the uh, various decomposition table those are the variables the physical capital after that second year period so uh, it affect to the physical capital same variable 65% gdp it is 25% at the 10th period private investments the least 9.4 uh, like that So then we can use the bar model for forecasting as well. Go to the our bar model. Quick estimate bar. Then uh, go to the proc. 
and make system. Prop, make model. Sorry, go to the prop and make model. Those are the forecast. Right, if you want, then delete one variable. See what has happened to uh, the other model. See what happened to the other model. So then see what happened. If we had uh, one variable cut down, then go to the variable B. Go to the variable B to shut down. Genus and exogenous and equation one. Right, so then once again. In the vector error correction model. Those are the, this is the model. In this model. Go to the proc, make system order by variables. Our physical cat, this is our model. Quick estimate equation. This is our model. This model. Think, sorry, proc. Select. Copy. Uh, estimate equation. private investment as an exogenous variable.
Presidente Xavier Rizas. Right. In our model, do the estimate work for L fiscal capital and L GDP, L privacy. Uh, this is the vector the correction model. estimate assumption is GDP is this is the vector correction model and cut and paste Right, here what I do is assume that our dependent variable, uh, sorry, we want to that consumption, our country's uh, consumption expenditure depends on, on the uh, government uh, income and the private investment. what the, you should do is go to the view and then go to the lag, uh, lag structures and AR root graph except one variable on R in the uh, inside the circle it shows that our series are stationary but the problem is only this variable. Then go to the leg structure, range of causality, block exogenity test. Uh, the consumption is a significant variable, GDP is not, and the private investment is, a, uh, is can consider as a uh, exogenous variable. Except GDP, all other two variables can consider as a exogenous. Then go to the view and uh, it is uh, lag length criteria. Mostly you know that include one lag is okay if the lag length criteria shows that one lag is okay. Then go to the 
residual test for hologram maximum lag selection shows that one lag then go to the normality and the jag vera then go to the wave impulse response multiple graph and the same thing results we can get by using the variance decomposition by using tables then we can use the data for forecast make model uh, gdp remove gdp then this is the forecast model the variables <coughs> question 1 and extension 2 this is gdp deleted the same thing you can do for all other variables consider then what is uh, your dependent variable and what is the independent variable then there are some criticisms in the war model uh, many argue that why approach is lacking in theory uh, there is a much debate on how the lag length should be determined it is possible to end up with the model including numerous explanatory variables with different signs which has implication of decrease of freedom many of the parameters are insignificant this uh, impact to the efficiency of the regression model if uh, we include many lags of the same variable it create a multi collinearity issue this is an example this is the unrestricted var results the granger causality test uh, results this is the impulse response functions when treasury bill is the dependent variable only treasury bill uh, 
this is the only significant variable all other are insignificant in the unrestricted bar model Uh, but the model has a serious autocorrelation issue. Uh, this is due to the serial autocorrelation problem. Uh, treasury bill is the Granger course. But not twice versa. Most of the effect from the unit shocks comes through the lag dependent variable, but the shocks falls away to zero uh, quickly, fairly quickly. Like in the Granger causality test, uh, can be further subdivided into the long run causality and the short run causality. Uh, this requires the use of error correction model or the vector error correction model uh, for long run causality. Long run causality is determined by the error correction term. If uh, it is significant, it indicates that there is a long-run causality from the explanatory variables to the dependent variable. The short-run causality is determined by the wall test. So, uh, uh, long-run causality, when for, uh, before error correction model can be formed, the first evidence is co-integration. The co-integration implies that there is a significant error correction term. The co-integration can be viewed as indirect test for the long run causality. Like in the short run causality can be used uh, can be measured by using the wall test. Uh, long run causality can be used uh, for the vector error correction model. Like there are some limitations in the uh, vector error correction model. The main weakness is it has uh, it is lack uh, of theoretical foundation. Also, uh, it doesn't affect, uh, it doesn't show that the effect is positive or negative. Uh, to assess the effect of any shocks to the system, we need to use impulse response functions or the variance decompositions. Uh, as an alternative, vector correction model Uh, can be used and they allow first difference variables and error correction term. These are the difference between a uh, vector error correction model and the advantages of using vector error corrections, uh, prerequisites of using the vector error correction model. And uh, in the VAR model also, there are some uh, shortcomings of the VAR model. Uh, how to, you know, that estimate the VAR model 
is also explained. In briefly, if I uh, use the same, first our task is if you are using time series data, if you are using time series data, first graph the data, uh, time series data by using a graph, right? Like uh, wise here I, ex uh, I explained very briefly a graph, L uh, GDP, L consumption, and L human capital and physical capital and private investment, right? So there is a multiple graph and then see the behavior of the variables. Then check the correlogram or unit root test. Then check the correlogram quick. Uh, series statistics correlogram. Correlogram uh, LGDP. Right, this is the way to calculate. Uh, check. So then check the autocorrelation. Uh, this uh, autocorrelation column. Then uh, uh, formal method is you need to test LGDP. It is the uh, levels of Mantra test. Then this value, probability value, compare the probability value is less than 5%. If there is less than 5%, uh, we reject log uh, GDP as a unit rate. That means non-stationary. That means we accept the series as stationary. But in this case, we reject uh, and then we accept this. If so, go to the first difference then. Then we accept our series are stationary. If all the series, do the same for all the series. After that, go to the quick and estimate work. It's a vector error correction model. The vector error correction model uh, infrastructure development or GDP or relationship this. Then this is the vector error correction model. Before vector error correction model go to the quick and uh, do the co-integration. Johnson point integration. Right, the te test point integration test, a test shows that there is a no point integration relationship between uh, fiscal capital and uh, GDP and the private investment. If there is a no point integration, method is estimate to our, and it is L physical capital, L GDP, and L private investment. Right, this is the vector regression model. In the vector regression model, and make system order by variable. This is our model, first model. Take each model and quick state equation and see that. In the C1, what is the C1 means? Your physical capital, lack of physical capital effect to the current year, this year physical capital is significant. This variable is also significant C6. That means uh, two-year lacks private investment impact to the physical capital. When consider that R square, it is 19%. Uh, it's very not some statistic is 2.06. And the overall model is 
okay. If it is, go to the residual diagnostics. But there is a no cor cor correlation, autocorrelation issue. There is a no heterocidastic issue because this probability value is less than zero, less, uh, greater than 5%. Then say, uh, go to the hist uh, histogram, but there is a normality issue in the problem, in the model. Right? Uh, do the same for each model. Do the same test for each model. Then go to the view. Then go to the view and uh, and do the and uh, do the uh, AR root graph and do the uh, Granger causality test and do the lag exclusion, exclusion test and do the lag length criteria and the do the residual test for correlogram and the normality. After that, do the impulse response function and do the variance decomposition. And by using your own data set, uh, test all these. If the, your data are the time series data, and first uh, plot the data and graph the data, then uh, test the correlogram and then test the unit root. If uh, after that, do the point integration test. In the point integration test, if there is a point integration, run the vector error correction model. If there is a no point integration, and run the VAR model. And then today I discuss the VAR model. In the VAR model, uh, uh, get the output of uh, AR root, AR root graph, and the Granger causality, and the lag exclusive test. Do the lag exclusive test, and do the lag length criteria, and do the residual test. That is Fourierogram and the normality test. Then do the uh, impulse response functions and as well as the variance decompositions. And by using uh, the data set which I have included for your, by using your own da a data set uh, to this activity. then uh, please uh, upload your activity uh, to the Dropbox within a couple of weeks. If you have any questions, please upload to the LMS. Uh,
save your data file now.